Welcome back to Jungle Dragons. I hope you can see and hear me okay. Right now I'm being forced to use a 25 millimeter lens on a 3 fourths camera and that translates into a 50 millimeter lens so I need to buy a shorter lens so if you want to donate to me please do. Anyways, let's jump right into it guys. I got a suggestion from one of my fans to make a video about what I feed my feeders and actually like how I feed my feeders. So. Uh, that's what this video is all going to be about, and I realized pretty quickly, like, actually, you know, unless you've got years of experience doing this, or you have a lot of chameleons and years of experience of doing this, you know, you're, you're at the end of the day, you're just playing by ear because there's tons of products in the market, and then there's tons of products in the non-established market, which is like peer-to-peer, -peer, stuff like this, uh, Roach Bedding Chow, which, um, you know, get as close as I can, but, um... Basically, that's out of focus, I'm sure. But anyways, you know, I'll, I'll get this type of stuff from websites or from people in the space that don't even have websites sometimes, but it's super effective and my feeders actually love it. So, that being said, let's jump into this. So, I'm gonna start off with something really easy. I'm gonna talk about what I feed my crickets first and foremost. So, of everything on this table, the only thing I actually give my crickets are simply water crystals, traditional water crystals, which hopefully everyone has access to, they're relatively cheap, um, as well as Fluker's High Calcium Cricket Diet. Um, this is one of the few ones which is affordable enough to be worth buying it because uh, the other things Fluker's makes is actually way, way, way overpriced. Like their little uh, green and orange little cubes they sell, that stuff's way overpriced, guys. Do not buy it. Uh, unless you are really lazy and you're willing to do that, I guess. But if you're lazy and you have all the money in the world, then yeah, go ahead and go for it. But it's actually healthier if you buy them raw vegetables. So instead of that, you buy them actual, like uh, a bag of carrots is less than one of those little bottles and it'll last twice as long as you get twice as many carrots. But don't just give them that. Also give them mixed greens. One of my favorite things to give them is actually uh, cucumbers, sliced cucumbers. Never give them whole vegetables, they'll rarely get into it and they'll rarely chew through the skin to get to the soft, juicy inside that they are supposed to get to. And for that reason, I still have to give them the water crystals, but also I give them a uh, Rapashi Bug Burger. Uh, Bug Burger is great for dubia roaches, all kinds of roaches, pretty much all feeders almost, literally. Like this stuff is an amazing omni meal for, for most of them. It is a, a, amazing ingredients for it. It keeps my chameleons healthy and strong. Um, basically when it comes to the crickets, I'll finish with saying, I give them basically any scraps. So I've mentioned greens and carrots and cucumbers. Those are the things that are like optimized for them that I will buy specifically for them sometimes because of how cheap carrots and cucumbers and mixed greens can be. But other than that, I'll also give them random scraps that I have laying around. For example, right now, I have a bunch of green apples off of a tree that uh, my girlfriend's parents have, and they have all these apples. So they don't need them, so I bring them, and they're kind of sour, so I don't necessarily love them myself. They're also kind of small. So I slice those up into little cubes, um, or triangular pyramid cubes, I guess, and I feed them to the crickets as well, and they love them. They love them for the sugar and the, the starch and the, and the moisture, the water in there. So they'll eat anything. Anyways, okay, we're going to move on from crickets. So I'm going to get rid of just that basically and go on to dubias. Dubias, same thing goes for cucumbers and carrots. I'll feed them those. Obviously, bug burger is a big treat. I give them regularly. I also give them... I actually forgot to get this out. I also give them um, bee pollen. Bee pollen is got, it's got a lot of protein actually, uh, but it's kind of expensive, so I don't give them a ton of it, but that's really good. So if you're gonna isolate a smaller number of insects to really gut load to give to your chameleons or whatever reptile you're feeding, um, that's when you'd wanna use this bee pollen, because otherwise they could eat it, digest it, and it is through their system in a short amount of time, and the, the actual nutrients that you want in your chameleons will be kind of mostly out of their system. So, also, um, while I'm talking about dubias, I'm also gonna incorporate what I'm feeding my red runners now. Um, I feed my red runners and dubias this roach bedding chow that I got from fullthrottlefeeders.com. Great stuff, they like it so far. 
Uh, I also get this basically just wheat shavings. Surprisingly, they love it. It's literally just like wheat shavings. Um, and I'm gonna zoom in on all this stuff later, guys, so you can get a close look at what I'm actually showing you. But these shavings here, um, I get them from J uh, yeah, JFK Dragons. JFK Dragons mostly specializes in bearded dragons, but he also has some other uh, mixed resources for the Bay Area. But he does ship uh, nationally and I think even internationally. Um, if you want really high quality water crystals for your bugs, oh my God, you just got that on camera. <laughs> it's heavier than it looks. It's like a pound of water crystals. Gosh darn it. I'm going to have to get a new one, guys, right now. Pause. Okay, well, if you just saw that, uh, I just got all my water crystals into a new container. And it's really good to have lots of containers and lids in case stuff like that ever happens. Otherwise, it's a huge hassle. But, I'm all set now. Oh, look at that. I even got this. Cool. Cool, cool. All right, I'm going to consolidate some stuff as well. But, um, all right, moving on, guys. So I was talking about my Dubias and my Red Runners and how they love this wheat, this, like, really fluffy white. Uh, it's not white. It's a uh, really fluffy wheat um, substrate. And honestly, they can just, like, live on that for days. It's amazing how long uh, Red Runners and Dubia can go without food because it's not that I don't ever ever have my containers without any food in them they always have food in them but it just it's surprising how long this stuff lasts because they don't actually eat it that fast so anyways I also give them I already mentioned bug burger these two substrates basically uh, occasionally give them the uh, bee pollen and besides that I also give them mixed greens and that's basically it that's it that simple that's carrots, mixed greens, cucumbers. Um, so far, all of my feeders, literally all of them, uh, like cucumbers. Okay, so moving on to superworms. My superworms now, they also actually like uh, bug burger, um, but don't give them too much bug burger because then they start um, basically their their urine or, or poop, whatever their their feces are. It has high amounts of ammonia in it, which is actually toxic, and it will actually hurt them, and it will make them somewhat toxic. So do not give them too much bug burger. That is my experience. Give them mixed greens, like very organic food, mixed greens mostly. Um, some of these chows, they actually will eat a tiny bit of as well, but they don't like it nearly as much as just mixed greens and uh, water crystals, but um, yeah. Superworms, not super picky. Uh, they'll eat the apples I mentioned. They'll even eat tomatoes. Uh, crickets will eat tomatoes, but tomatoes are nightshades, which make them slightly acidic. Not People say it's toxic, but it's really not toxic. It's more like just, it'll make them acidic and not super healthy for your chameleons if you give them a lot of the same food source which has that. So basically, um, don't ever, like if you feed off some tomatoes, it should be like one tomato, you know? And I'm talking about small tomatoes, and that's why I even brought them up is because I have them in eyesight. I'm talking about these little ones. I don't know if you can see. Um, sorry again about um, my lens. I know it's hard to see what I'm holding, so I'm gonna bring the camera around later on and show you everything. Um, okay, so I've talked about both my roach breeds, crickets, um, super worms. Lastly, um, I'll bring up soup, uh, horn worms. Horn worms I don't currently have, but you need to get special food for them. It's, it's difficult to take care of them unless you have a bunch of tomato plants that you're willing to let them destroy. And that's not a joke. I've tested this. I've, I've bought, in, uh, I bought four tomato plants once to feed to horn worms to see how fast they ate it and to see if I could have like a stable relationship where like they live on the tomato plant inside of the cage, tomato plants grow and the thing is tomato plants need full sun and in, indoors they just can't get enough sun no matter what so the plants wilt and slowly die over like a three month span and the bugs uh, will just consume the plant like crazy 
and it just it doesn't work out in the end so you know uh, you have to have an outdoor enclosure basically in the end with a bunch of tomato plants and I currently live in too cold and cloudy of a climate to really do that so I buy super horn, or super horn by Rapashi. That stuff's good for them, totally works. That's all they need to eat. Um, when it comes to calci worms or soldier black flies, I give them basically mixed, I was about to say trash, but basically anything. They eat anything. They even eat meat, okay? They will eat any scraps you feed them. So soldier black flies are really awesome in that regard. Um, other than that, that's basically it, guys. I didn't mention, uh, Rapashi Hydro Load is just a different form of water crystals, which is really good for them. And I also didn't mention what I use to powder my, my feeders. Uh, Reptivite with D3 by Zoomed is actually pretty effective. So I do that, um, about once to twice a week for my panthers. And for my, um, my montane species, uh, which are quadricornises for me, I use Rapashi's calcium plus low D. That means low uh, D3, there's not a lot of it in there. Um, so this stuff is what you'd wanna give for montane species like uh, uh, a Jackson chameleon, for example. Um, okay guys, other than that, that basically summarizes everything. I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, me actually feeding them now. And I want to also just show you that I have a chameleon just, just out here, just kind of chilling. <laughs> uh, she does not want to come off of her pothos plant, and uh, I'll let her be. Anyways, let's take a look. All right, guys. So here they are. We got the high calcium uh, diet from Flukers. We got the uh, Apache Bug Burger. Roach bedding chow next to another form of roach bedding chow right there, which is the mixed like wheat shavings. Above it, we got our daily, uh, non daily vitamins. I usually do once or twice a week. Uh, Montaigne's less once a week, the uh, Panthers twice a week. Um, over here, we got our water crystals, we got our bee pollen right here. And right there, I didn't mention, is a multi daily vitamin, and I put that on the feeders probably um, two to three times a week as well. And I put all these powders kind of together on the feeders and it stays in the bottom of these buckets that I use. So that bucket, uh, that's where I'll put my feeders and you know, I'll, I won't even bounce them around on my own at all. I'll literally just let them sit in there for a few minutes and they'll walk around and they'll get dusted on their own. So anyways, lastly, I also have Super Cal Load No D which is also for my montanes because they're so sensitive to uh, vitamin D3. Um, so that's something that I put in with the mixtures on occasion. Um, that's basically it. I also will mention this as a medicine. Uh, my my uh, This is kind of expert advice just for montanes, but particularly quadricornises. They need some vitamin A and they can't get it in captivity very well, so you actually have to give them that. And What I end up doing is basically poking a little hole in these little capsules. I'm gonna show you. They are these little, little capsules. They're gel, they're gel capsules, okay? And uh, I poke a hole in them and I just um, kind of smear it on their teeth. So I get the capsule in between their, their lips and I just kind of ooze it in there, and that way they get some. They don't really spit it. They can't. They, they, they don't use their tongue to clean their mouth, so instead they just kind of drink it a little bit. So that's my favorite way of doing it. Force feeding a whole capsule is traumatic for them for the most part. I, I have tried it, but um, yeah, it's not a great suggestion, I would say. Um, all right, and next I'm going to actually feed my feeders, and we're going to do that together, okay? Okay, so if you guys are seeing this, I want to uh, first demonstrate, I do have a heat lamp, a 24-7 heat lamp in here for my crickets, because tropical crickets have massive die-offs if you don't give them some form of heat. Um, I am going to be doing a feed off of my crickets, 
and some other feeders. So as I do this, I will in fact be uh, gathering some of these guys up to feed off today. Sorry, I'm looking for a lid, which unfortunately is very important. Okay guys, so um, the way I actually get my crickets is with this big like one gallon, it's actually two quarts, half a gallon, two and a half quarts, sorry. Just from Home Depot, I have two of them. One says dust, one says no dust. The no dust one is specifically for my Montans because they're so sensitive to um, supplements that they can get uh, gular edema, which is basically a uh, just a water, too much water saved up in their gular, which is their neck area. My uh, That's how I get my crickets off the lid. Those are the volunteers to die. Uh, I have some old little grape vines in here. I'm also going to put some shriveling grapes in here because these grapes are going to go bad and they're all shriveled up enough that I don't want to eat them. There's already wa a tiny slice of watermelon in there. I'm experimenting with that and they are eating it up. They're loving it. So far, all their food is pretty dr uh, wet. So I'm going to put in this uh, high calcium cricket diet because it's a little drier and they might like the uh, change. They might like to have some dry food as well. So gonna just sprinkle that on their cardboard there. And that's literally it. They already have two different fruits. Um, I don't have any good greens at the moment, so I'm just gonna let them go at that because I've got, let them go with that because I've got plenty of food in there for them. So that's basically it. The only problem is I need some more crickets. So I'm going to get my tongs because I don't like to handle them with my fingers only because my fingers are not the right tools for picking up crickets. Um, and this is when this lid comes in, hand, comes in handy. Obviously they can jump out if you have no lid so there's one. Getting the males is harder. The males don't have like a leash on their tail basically. The females are easy, they've got this long thing on their tail, which is how they lay their eggs in the dirt, but males don't have that, so you can still get the males, so I just got two in a row. Anyways, alright, that's all I need to see for this part. So I just, I just dusted my crickets with uh, the daily vitamin, right here, as well as a tiny bit of the Reptivite, which I'm almost out of. Um, but yeah, so they've been highly dusted, so I keep this type of food away from montanes. Um, if you're interested in quadricornises and montanes, another note, don't feed them crickets in general. Crickets just aren't good for them for some reason. Uh, it's some infection or bacteria that they have that causes a, uh, a gular edema as well as some other health complications. So keep the crickets away from your, your montanes. Okay. Okay, all right everyone, now for my red runners who are more of a shy, kind of like dubias, they're kind of shy of light and such. I'm noticing a couple of eggs on the top here that never hatched. That is, uh, actually no, I know, I've heard this before, I actually saw in a video that the eggs that they lay do hatch. So if they haven't shriveled up, just let them be. The apples they're eating, here's one of the green apples I was talking about. You can tell it's kind of small, very green, kind of sour. Um, here's some of the wine grapes I was telling you I feed them. They're not loving the wine grapes. They're hardly digging in, in fact. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out put it in my crap cup. I do have a crap cup that's all nasty inside just because I need to have a place to put feces and trash. So. Um, I also have two sets of tongs, by the way. I recommend doing this. This is my food tongs. Food tongs are orange. Crap tongs are yellow, like this. And I will grab uh, old food that feeders do not like regularly. Oh gosh, I just missed. I don't know if you guys can see this. Anyway, okay, so getting rid of that. Getting rid of this grape as well. They seem to be liking everything. They don't seem to like the 
water crystals too much, honestly, which is surprising because almost everything eats water crystals. They kind of just intuitively learn what they are and what they're for and all. Anyways, um, I think they need some kind of water source that they enjoy more than just apples. So I'm going to put some of my actual bug burger in here. I cut them in half. They're like an inch. They're longer than an inch, these cubes I have. They're like rectangular cubes. And I cut them in half right when I put them in there so that now they're smaller. They're like a centimeter. They're like one square centimeter cube food. Uh, food cubes. <laughs> Anyways, okay. And that's them. That's all I'll need for a while. I am going to... Oh gosh, I'm spilling things like crazy today. And it's nasty too because some of the stuff is like... Nasty. Okay, I gotta get that away from myself. Okay, back up here so I don't touch that again. But what I was about to say is I actually need to feed off some of these guys to my uh, quadricornices. So good luck to me getting them. Luckily, Red Runners are my most prolific feeder. The only scary thing is that they are so prolific and so fast that they are kind of terrifying in the sense that if you l bring them into your home, you're inviting a actual potential infestation because unlike Dubia, these guys can continue living in rather colder temperatures. So, you know, um, they're something you really don't want to bring into your house and have a large population of unless you're really good at what you do and you know you're not going to accidentally let them loose, basically. Got one. The males are way easier to get because they have these big wings that they get slowed down by. I need at least like six of these guys. Anyways, that's probably boring enough as it is for you guys, so I'm going to cut it there, I think, and, um, yeah. Alright everyone, the last thing I forgot is, uh, I'm not, I'm going to skip Dubias, because it's the same as Red Runners, basically, same exact stuff, but, uh, my one secret is super worms are super cheap, because Oats are super cheap. I literally sprinkle about, sprinkle about one cup of this in here every month, sometimes more, sometimes less, but never too much more because uh, there's mites in here, little baby mite eggs, and unless you put them in the freezer for a month, they will sprout and they will just kind of proliferate all over the place, and they're just kind of eh. Not a huge problem, but annoying to say the least. So never put too many in here at once. Otherwise, the uh, the mites, the oat mites, whatever they're called, will pro proliferate all over the place. Anyways, that's basically it. They just need some water source, oats, and whatever else you want to give them, and they'll be happy. So that basically summarizes everything for this video, guys. Um, sorry, I don't have time to make it any longer. So. Uh, I hope you learned something, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Have a good one.